So hello everyone and thanks for still being here. I'm very excited to be here today. And my name is Johanna Pierker and I'm educator and researcher here at the Graz University of Technology. And I focused on research on learning environments. But the truth is I play a lot of video games for research and I, I'm a game developer because my future looks like we all play video games while we're learning. This is my perfect future. And why is that? Because the way we are using the technology has changed. The new generations are so different. We love mobile phones. We want to be flexible. When we're waiting for the train or for a bus, we take out the mobile phone, play maybe a small little mobile game, or eventually watch a YouTube vi um, video. This has changed so tremendously over the past years. Um, but this also comes with challenges. So there are so many distractions nowadays. So I want to embrace this idea of using new technologies also for learning and for teaching. However, I want also to help those generations to keep up this constant need for motivation and engagement they're so used to through all this entertainment around them. But I also want them to help bring back their focus and their concentration. Because again, so many distractions are coming with those technologies. Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram messages popping up constantly. And when I design learning environments, I always think of this target group first. And where is my target group? They're at the moment in arenas. They're filling arenas. Learners nowadays are filling arenas and watching other people play video games. This is actually a picture, um, I think, from the championships of League of Legends. So gamers or game fans watching others play video games. Isn't that great? <laughs> so how did that escalate so quickly? <laughs> so let me explain you something. I don't know who of you here is a gamer, or a couple of you. So do you know that video games, or the video games industry, outperformed Hollywood in terms of revenue many years ago? GTA V makes more money than Avatar, or Spider-Man, or Star Wars, or the Harry Potter series. Did you know that? The digital games industry is more making more money than the digital book industry, digital music industry, or digital streaming industry combined. So when we design new applications or new technologies or learning environments for this generation, we need to think about what is so exciting about games? What is so interesting about games? And I want to tell you a few facts, because every time I introduce myself as a gamer or as a game designer, there's so many stereotypes. So I want to tell you, games have changed and gamers have changed. If you think of a gamer, how does a gamer look like? <laughs> you most probably think of this 12-year-old boy sitting in the basement, eating pizza and playing World of Warcraft all night long, right? <laughs> That's not true. Looking at the statistics, you know who's the average gamer? I am. Looking at the statistics, looking at the facts, I am the average gamer. Um, here are some st statistics from the Entertainment Software Association. Um, the average gamer today, in 2018, is 34 years old. So basically, this is the generation who grew up with video games. This is a generation, I'm in this generation, who does not know any world without video games. When I was two or three years old, I knew how to start Prince of Persia on, the, on my father's PC, even before I was able to read or write. Back then, I had to use the command line on DOS to, to start this game. But I wanted to play the game, so I learned that. And Again, if you look at the statistics, it's not only men who play video games. We women love to play video games as well. Maybe we play different types, maybe we dif play on different devices, but we love to play video games as well. Let me tell you a small story. Um, in 2011, I was at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. 
And I was supposed to meet this super, super famous physicist, MIT physicist, and uh, like a brilliant, brilliant person, and I was super nervous meeting him. And when we finally met, I yeah, was very shy and introduced myself. Hello, my name is Johanna. I'm a game developer. And he immediately was like, I hate video games. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and, and he told me, I hate video games like Super Mario because the physics is so wrong. Like jumping and everything, that's just wrong. They didn't do it right. I only play games like Skyrim where the physics is implemented so nicely and so accurate. So you never know who is actually playing the experiences you develop as a developer. Um, you never know who actually is the target group, also looking outside of the statistics. Um, so not only the gamers have changed, all of the games changed. When I talk about games, most people immediately would think of shooters and action games. Um, which are like those evil, evil things in the world. But that's not true. For me, playing a video game in the evening is the same fantastic and nice experience like reading a book or like watching a movie. And if I think of movies, they're not only action movies, there's not only Die Hard out there. There are so many different types of movies I can watch. Um, there are documentaries, there are dramas, there are science fiction movies, there are romantic comedies. The same for games. There are so many types of games out there. It's not only shooters. And I want to um, talk about three small examples which I really love. And if you leave this room and go straight back to computer to, uh, to the computers after this talk and play video games one of those I am gonna introduce to you this would be my goal for tonight <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first game which I love is called Dead Dragon Cancer Dead Dragon Cancer is a game developed by a couple a husband and wife and they got a baby a baby boy and when the child was 12 months old, he was diagnosed with the final stage of cancer. It is a very, very tragic story, and they wanted to share and explain all the ups and downs they had after that, how they went to treatment. Sorry, guys, it's not good. And also how it did not end very well in the end. It's a very, very, very sad and Basically dramatic story. But instead of writing it down and sharing the so story through a book miracle. or through a documentary, they wanted to have others experience what they went through, through a video game. Because a video game is interactive, and if they're going to treatment, you are in the game with them. When you're watching a movie, you're sitting in front of the TV, and you're sort of the third person. Here, you're part of the treatment, you're part of every experience. So games are not always fun. I'm sorry, guys. Games are experiences. It's not good. And that's how I learn, by being part of such an experience. Um, another game which I really love is called This Wharf Mine. This Wharf Mine is developed by Polish Studio, and it is a war game, right? But they're not telling the story from this typical hero in the war. They want to tell the story of the other side of the war. What is happening behind the walls? What is happening if you are a civilian? If your only goal is to survive the war? So they are telling the story of the war of Sarajevo, and you're basically playing one of the civilians, and you try to survive, and you are sort of trapped there in a small space, um, and all you need is food and some water, eventually medicine, and you're trapped there with your family or with your friends. And when I was playing this game, I had this really, really um, strong experience. So I was trapped in this small space together with my virtual partner, and my partner got sick in the game. So. I needed to get out there of my safe space within the game to find medicine. Um, however, 
when I got out there, it was super hard. I did not find any medicine anywhere. So the only chance I had, eventually I found an old couple and they had medicine, but they were sick as well. So I had to make a decision. Would I want to save my partner's life in order and, and steal or rob the medicine from this old couple, which would basically mean to kill them? Or would I let my partner die? And that's a very difficult decision to make. Like while playing a video game, hey, 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 fun, fun, oh, <coughs> damn. And this, this was, for me, really, really mind-blowing, because if you all of a sudden are before such a decision, you need to think, and you start thinking, and again, this is how you learn by being exposed to such situations and such, such, such decisions. Another very, very important example, the last example I want to give, is called Pass Out. And this is so, exam um, so incredible and important because this tells a very relevant story nowadays. It's developed by, it's an Austrian um, game actually, it's developed by Abdullah Karam, and he's a refugee coming from Syria. So he wants to share his story through a video game, how he was able to escape the civilian war in Syria in 2014, and how difficult it was. Um, you saw him in the, in the very beginning. Th this is him actually telling the so story. And this is how the game looks like. It's, it looks super cute, isn't it? But all of a sudden, like in the very beginning, you already have this really, really difficult <laughs> scene where you need to say goodbye to your family, maybe forever. But that's a real story. And after a while, you're somewhere in the forest. It's dark, even though it looks super nice and super cute. But you already get the emotion that it's getting dark, it's getting a little bit dangerous eventually. And all of a sudden, there's a guy approaching, and you know, this one is not good. And he has a gun, and then he shoots you. And in the game, all of a sudden, a small video with real Abdullah is uh, popping up. And Abdullah tells you, hey man, you just got me killed in the game. I mean, you got another life here. But if I would be that clumsy in real life, like you in the game, I would be dead now. And that's the truth. It's funny. It sounds funny, but that's the truth. And this is what makes us think. And this is so incredibly important, especially this story nowadays. This is something what we need to see such stories from other perspectives. Um, so by playing video games, I became the, became the learner. And that's how I also create better learning experiences. And again, I would be super happy if some of you got inspired to also become a learner. For example, Pass Out, you can play for free um, online. You can download the first episode for free. So I believe that games changed, changed quite a lot. But more importantly, games can change us and have the power to change us when we are using them to learn. As a very last point of this presentation, I want to also tackle this um, idea of how to bring back the focus in the new generation. Again, there's the smartphone everywhere, constantly messages popping up. And a couple of years ago, I tried out this, I mean, it's relatively new, it's out there for 40 years, but now it's finally um, much more affordable than it was back then. Um, it, it is a technology which was for me so incredible, immersive, and something so new that it's so hard to describe. And this is, I think, how people felt when they saw this screening of, of movies for the very first time. So there's this urban legend that when people saw this movie, like one of the first movies for the first time, they were so scared that they wanted to run away of the, of the coffee shop. And virtual reality, gives us another experience, which is quite literally sometimes blowing our mind. <laughs> and we want to combine those ideas of using engagement theories. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to move now to the next slide. And we want to put together engagement theories and this power 
of the new virtual reality technologies and create learning experiences, which are, are eventually engaging and fun and motivational, but also give you the option to see things which are otherwise not seen. Here, this is a physics experiment, and you can, in a very playful way, interact with all the different physics experiments, uh, throw away things, and, and you get this feeling that you're actually there and can try out the things and see things which are usually unseen or too dangerous. But more importantly, virtual reality gives me back my focus. Because in my virtual reality world, when I put on the virtual reality glasses, there is no smartphone which is ringing all the time. There is no virtual smartphone yet with virtual Instagram in my virtual reality yet. <laughs> and this is how I imagine the future of education, a playful, and very immersive experience. Thank you so much.